You know, uh, when I was in seminary, it I just dawned on me. Uh, we had a guest speaker from Korea whose name is uh, Billy Kim. A uh, well-known, uh, one of the, you know, well-known speaker, uh, pastor in Korea who is a perfect bilingual. Uh, he was adopted by American GI. He came over here when he was like 13 or 14. He grew up in the uh, East Coast. Uh, and he was visiting our seminary. This was back in many years ago, <laughs> like 30 years ago or so, when I was in seminary, so a long time ago. And he had this term that, you know, that, you know, uh, surprised a lot of uh, listeners. Uh, there's a, you know, regular seminary uh, and Caucasian and all that. You know, let's do open prayer. And what is open prayer? Let's do Korean-style prayer. And they all go, what is Korean-style prayer? And then what it meant was, why don't we open our mouth, and, you know, and then let's, uh, you know, with, you know, uh, audible voice you can hear what you're praying, uh, praying and you can, okay, let's all pray together. So I think when John, Pastor John mentioned that, let's all pray for him, I was expecting, yeah, you know that, but silence. <laughs> I encourage that to my, you know, our Korean ministry uh, congregants too, when we say let's all pray together. I mean, you don't have to out loudly, you know, yell, but, uh, you know, something you can hear what you're praying, uh, you know, your own voice. When it's too loud, I always say it, it can bother others in sitting next to you, but if you can hear what you're praying, it helps. You can pray in silence when you're praying alone, which is perfectly fine, but you know, in a group like this, in a worship service, it does help. So next time when Pastor John says, let's all pray together, and then at least you can hear what you're praying in your own ears. Amen? amen. Only half says amen. The other half, I don't know what you're thinking, but that's okay. Uh, so why don't we uh, open our Bible and go to the uh, book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. And I, I, I've asked Jacob, Brother Jacob, to put an ESV uh, in a version uh, on the screen. So I'm going to read that. Verse 2. Can we do the responsible reading? I'll read the verse 1. You read verse 2. You know that responsible reading? Let's do it. I'm going to read the verse 1 first. Uh, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, write, The words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not, got, you have not grown weary, but I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent, and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Yet this you have, you hate the works of Nicolaitans, and I which I also hate. Let's all read together. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is the paradise of God. Amen. It's the word of God. And I've got to be a little bit frank with you. This is the message that I... already shared with my KM congregants on the first Sunday of this year, 2016. You know, we come up with, a, you know, every year, New Year's slogan. And then you probably can, in good eyesight, you can read that, you know, it's Korean, and then the, you know, the, right below there, rediscover your first love. Uh, that's what it is. So I'm going to talk about that uh, today with you. I also need to confess that, you know, I thought, because I already did once, about two months ago or so, it was only a piece of cake. But then when I sat down and then, when I looked at it, it was like a new message. What I shared, I couldn't remember. So, uh, you know, I, even the framework, what I shared with the Korean ministry is the same, but then and how I, you know, came up with uh, yesterday, it's a little bit different. When you hear the word, you know, book of Revelation, You are, some of you are very intimidated because the you know, book of Revelation, you know, which contains what's going to happen in the future, last days. It is true, some of the passages are very difficult to understand, somewhat complicated, and you don't know what they're trying to communicate, what uh, Pastor John is trying to communicate to Christians in Asia Minor back in the first century. But you, have, you need to understand, this was a letter written to Christians And during, during their time, 
So it's a letter, actually. Uh, so the passage we just read this morning is a description of uh, the a particular church in that, you know, Asia Minor, which was known back then in ancient world, is today's Turkey. So there, there were churches in that, in that region. And this is a, a church in a, a place called Ephesus. So, you know, how they were, how they are, and, and how, what Apostle Paul, not Paul, Apostle John. Why did I say Apostle Paul? Because I'm studying, we're studying 1 Corinthians for the past 10 months. So, you know, that the Corinth, Corinthians is, is in, my, in my lips. Uh, you know, Apostle John, you know, is describing how these people were and something he wants to Remind them, a little stronger word, rebuke them. You have lost something, you know, get back to that. So, and I titled today's message based upon Revelation chapter 2, Rediscovering Your First Love. That's the title for the the morning's message. Let me briefly uh, share a few things about the city called Ephesus and also the church in, in that city, the Ephesian church. Uh, there are a lot of things I can talk about, but one thing that stands out when you think of, when I think of that particular city is there was a temple in that city, Temple of Artemis. Uh, it's a temple that was dedicated to uh, the goddess named, guess what, Diana. That's the name of, you know, the, the goddess. It was, it was dedicated to that sin, that, that uh, 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 god. And, you know, that temple was really big. And you go to a uh, that region even now. There is a place called Ephesus in Turkey these days. So, and I have a friend, good friend of mine, who has been there for a whole family the past 20 plus years. You know, I haven't been to Turkey yet, but there are a lot of Christians from all over the world. They come to visit these places. Not only Israel, you know, uh, uh, that they go uh, visit, but they go to uh, either, either Egypt or, you know, Turkey. Because when you, when you go there, you will find many sites. that can give you the background, that can give you the history of what we read in New Testament. So even now, there's a, you know, it was a huge temple, but only the foundation and one column remains uh, even now, which I think once measured, this is how big it was, only 20 feet long, 20, 20 feet wide, and 60 feet high. Uh, It was, uh, Diana was a goddess of the hunt, wild animals. So while they were, worshiping that goddess, you know, a whole uh, range of immoral activities were also done. So as a result, a lot of people in the city were very, you know, uh, shameless in what they do, even sexually. Which that, what that means is a lot of people in that Ephesus were very immoral. So Paul, you know, goes to that city, he preaches the gospel. If you read the book of Acts, he stay in that particular city, a city called Ephesus, good long three years. No wonder why he did that. He needed that time to really preach the gospel, you know, tell them about who Jesus was, who Jesus is, and you know, have them you know, come to the saving faith in Jesus Christ. So if you read, in New Testament, by the way, there's an epistle called Epistle to Ephesians, right? So I'm going to read this particular verse to kind of, a, kind of show you how they w o r k When they, when they didn't know Christ before Paul came and shared the gospel. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. And I'm using contemporary English version, which is my style. You know, so I'm going to read that, that verse 2. I hope we have the same. Maybe it, uh, what I have is not right. <laughs> that is, uh, is that ESV? Just want to make sure. Or is it a CEV? A CEV, okay. You read that, I'll read my own version. CEV here. It's easy. You follow the ways of this world and obey the devil. He rules the world and his spirit has power over everyone who doesn't obey God. So when you are, uh, before I you know, came to you, before I share the gospel, you follow the ways of the world, how other Ephesians were doing, how, how they were living, just like us. When we didn't know Christ, you can think, you can just, you know, go back and in retrospect, you know, how was I? When I say, you know, ask yourself, how was I? How how we were? I I don't, you know, I was born in Christian home. I grew up in the church, practically. 
my mom and dad, you know, they tell me, my, my, my parents tell me, you know, when you were a few months old, you know, we took you to the church. So you were infant baptized. And ever since then, like a good number of you, you know, for me, Sunday, Friday, Friday evening, that's the time, guess what I do? I go to church. Then Sunday for worship, and you know, Friday for Bible study. That's not what I'm saying. You know, before you uh, uh, personally you know, accept Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, you know, that, re- that, that, that relationship that you are able to establish, you know, before that moment, that, you know, before life and, and now life, and you know, how different they were, Ephesians were like that. You, know, you follow the ways of the world. Time had gone by, and church grew, And we find Apostle Paul in the passage I, we read responsibly, you know, we hear, we read Apostle John praising the church for different points, different uh, reasons. So I'd like to read again the verses 2 and 3. That one, that's not, yeah. Book of Revelation chapter 2, 2 and 3. You know, I gave the whole passage last night, so it was a last minute thing, so if anything is not right, then all the blame on me. But I'm going to read anyway, uh, chapter 2, Revelation, verse 2 and 3. I know everything you have done, including you, your hard work, and how you have endured. I know you will not put up with anyone who is evil. When some people pretended to be apostles, you tested them and found out that they were liars. You have endured and gone through hard times because of me. You have not given up. The whole thing is, Apostle John now, uh, knowing how the church is, how the people are in that church of church in Ephesus, you know, like what we read in the book of Ephesians, you know, you follow the ways of the world. You're very immoral, you know, looking after things that, you know, this whole world is asking you to possess. But time had gone by, they grew, and then I can tell, you know, you guys grew. You know, I can tell, you know, you, for the, the sake of the gospel, you know, you endured patience, you shared the gospel, you kept, you know, truth. And if we come to even verse 6, there was a one example, you know, how they were defending the truth for the church of Jesus Christ. What it is is, you hate the work of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. There's a group of people, now it's hard to really pinpoint and You know, and explain you know, who these people were, Nicolaitans. Uh, because away from this particular verse, there's nothing about this group mentioned in the Bible. But there's a, a guy named called Nicholas, or Nicola. How about Nicola in the book of Acts? I, and I got to say this because I don't know the exact word. In, you know. uh, uh, one of the seven deacons that, that were ordained in the in, in Jerusalem church All I'm trying to communicate is uh, the tradition tell us uh, he walked away from his faith or he uh, came up with a different understanding of you know, freedom in Jesus Christ. Basically, it's like uh, uh, Gnostics. Uh, there were a group of people called the Gnostics who believed you know, this body is evil. You can do whatever you want to do with it. Literally, whatever you want to do with it because when you die, you, you don't need this body. So, you know, freedom in Christ became sort of, you know, liberty that, you know, you can do whatever you want to do, which is not right, which is evil. So, the Christians in the Ephesian church, they, 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 uh, they hated, you know, that group, and they defend the faith, they, the truth, and they even probably, you know, uh, excommunicated, you know, uh, the, those people from the church. So, for the sake of the gospel, you know, their life was exemplary. Very good life. You know, that is not easy. I know even nowadays uh, in the Church of Jesus Christ, today's church, uh, on the one hand, you know, you want to defend the truth. So you know someone from the congregation who is uh, uh, talking about or preaching or teaching, you know, something different from the gospel that we have in the Bible. So you need to, uh, you know, tell this person or this member, you know, tell this person, this member, What you are teaching is not right. But in doing so, church gets into a big you know, chaos, a turmoil. Uh, or 
Because this, he's a member or she's a member, you want to protect the person, you let go of what is not right, what is false, and church also, also, also can get into big chaos. So for Christians in Ephesus, you know, how they were able to you know, fight against Nicolaitans, you know, how they were able to keep the faith and truth, how they, for the sake of proclaiming the gospel, they you know, endured patiently. You know, the whole life study is just amazing. It's a good example. Yet, Apostle John says, I have this against you. I got to rebuke you on this one, which is verse 4. But I have this against you. You have let go of the first, the love you had at first. You lost that first love. You have fallen from that high point. Now, the challenge is, What kind of love is he talking about? What is that love at first? If we know that, and then we can examine our lives, your life and my life, you know, how am I doing? If I claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ, how is my life? In the Bible, All the, the commandments, all the laws we, we, we know in Old Testament can be summarized and summed up in two commandments, right? Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 39. Let me read in uh, contemporary English version again. He replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind. Uh, this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as as you love yourself. And all the law, the prophets, depend on these two commands. The greatest commandment is what? Love your Lord God, love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, all your strength. The next one is love your neighbor as yourself. Now these are two commandments. I call the, you know, the the way of the cross in a vertical, loving God. horizontally loving your neighbor. However, these are not two separate commandments in a way. You know why? Now, 1 John 4, verse 20 and 21. If anyone says, I love God and hates a brother or sister, he's a liar. Because a person who does not love a brother or sister who can be seen cannot love God, who cannot be seen. This commandment we have from him, those who claim to love God ought to love their brother and sister also. If you claim to love God, if that is your genuine heart's desire, that's how you confess, then if you don't love your neighbor, brother and sister, that love is not really genuine. It's not real. So what is is John talking about to the Christians in Ephesus? Hey, by the way, look at this. I admire your life, how you are uh, working hard to uh, keep the truth, Proclaim the gospel. You know, praise God for that. However, when I look at you individually, each and every one of your church, you have lost something. Your love that you had at first, your first love. You know, uh, like I said, because the book of Revelation uh, contains what's going to happen in the last days, uh, there are uh, uh, very scary warning in a way. You read the verse 5. You know, he is now, uh, Apostle John was telling the Christians in, in Ephesus, hey, you guys lost your, your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent, do the works you did at first. If not, if you don't do that, if not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Unless you repent, I'm going to remove the lampstand, which means there will be no more church. Now, how can we avoid that? The answer is very simple. What? You repent. Think about from where you have fallen. Think about what you, what the love that you had at first. How was it? So it talks about, you know, three things. Repenting. Well, first of all, you need to remember how you were. I mean, even I can, I can even say how you were when you first met the Lord. I remember how I met him. first place. Like I say, even though I was born in a Christian home, it was only when I got to college, 
the thing about speaking to EM Congress is I can move around and they can come and, and look at you and then like Brother James, you know, it's very tired. James, praise you for, no, just kidding. Uh, but it was only when I was a sophomore in college at this retreat, I remember, you know, how God used the speaker to speak to my heart and studying the Philippians, book of Philippians, and how really that touched my heart and I surrendered my life to him. And after that, which I'm going to talk about, you know, that love that I have for God. Do you have that experience? You know, your first love, in a way. God, you know, I, I, now I understand who you are. Now I understand your love. So think about how you've fallen from that high point, how you were. Even with that, you know, I don't know about you. I wanted to share the gospel with the people around me, you know, my friends. Do you know Jesus? You know, that whole life uh, that, you know, the, the, the first love you had, remember how you've fallen from that. And then, when you remember that, if your life right now is not the same as, or even better than how it was, you need to repent. Repentance is not just saying, God, I'm so sorry. That's a part of it, but that's not all. Repentance is, I like this, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the example all the time. You know, you're walking toward that goal, that direction. The Lord is saying, this is right. You come, follow me. The Lord is saying that. You know, do this. You go toward that direction and then, boom. This is not right. Oh, this is what the Lord is saying. God is saying, from over there, come over here. I want you. And then you turn around and go in that way. So repentance is saying sorry to God first and then turning around and then complete direction, a directional change, change in direction, repent. Because it is only uh, verified, validated when your life proves that, when your lifestyle can prove that. That's what he's saying. Repent. You might have a works of the gospel. You might, people might be thinking you are very religious, very godly, but there's no power. What like Paul is saying, the Christians in, you know, uh, in the first century. So repent and change your lifestyle. Come back. I got to finish my message soon. It's already 45. So as an application, As an application, I want to share this with you. I mean, I, I thought about this, my own life. What is that love that I had first? Uh, how it was? And how about now? I came up with three, thing, three things. And I want to share this with you. You know, when I think of first love, love that I had at first is love that was really pure and clean. Uh, love that was not conditional. When I realized that You know, this Heavenly Father, Almighty God, loved me so much. God so loved the world, He gave His only only Son, begotten Son. For what? To save me, to deliver me from the darkness, the death. Redeem redeem me, you know, that love, unconditional love. Willing to give up His his Son for me. You know, no, no string attached. God, thank you. Out of that, I remember, you know, you become so zealous for God. You want to live this life for Him. If He gave me His only Son, Jesus Christ, you know, I will live for Him. Along with that, you know, you are just fully satisfied. Not because He gives you something, but because of who He is. The Almighty God, the Heavenly Father. He is my Father. I think that was my first love. Along the way, I then just got into it. You know, even in the church, even in my walk with him, you know, I pray for this. If he doesn't give, God, where are you? You got to give that to me. This is how much I did for you. How come you're not giving me this? I gave you this much. Then in return, aren't you supposed to give me this much? As far as I'm concerned, you know, that was what I was thinking. I think I've lost some of that too. You know, the love that I had at first, that sophomore year in college, that 
one winter night, snowy night, at like 1 a.m. in the morning, I went out and then I just cried out to God, Thank you, Father, for saving me. And I will live this life for you. It's been about 30-some years now. I'm not saying, you know, first love was always, you know, it's much better than what I have right now. You know, we become mature. We understand God better. But when it comes to really being fully satisfied with God, and out of that genuine love, you want to live this life? If we lost that, I think then Pastor John is telling us, God is telling us, then you also have fallen from the high point. You've lost that love. Think about it. Go back to it. Repent and live for me. Verse 7 says again, this will be repeated throughout the chapter 3 and chapter 3 in the book of Revelation, who, ha- who he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And God is speaking to our hearts. Whatever that that you feel you sense, you know, in, in relation to, in regarding to relation, you know, your relationship with God. And I pray, O oh Lord, that you, you know, you will, you will hear that, you will sense that, and if God is nudging your heart, you will change in repentance and look toward God and walk this journey all the way to the end. May God bless you.